Hi there, and welcome to my latest video, which is just looking at my glucose and keto readings, which happened during a 72 hour fast and a couple of days afterwards. And there will be some context about my glucose and keto readings before I did the fasting and before I did the chisel protocol. So obviously this is relating to eating carnivore and I'm not a big fan of glucose and keto readings, but they are an interesting metric. So uh, let's just go forward have a look okay so uh, on the right hand side of the screen we have the numbers here for um, uh, American and we also have for English so for instance 3.9 is 70 uh, there if you're looking just for in interest so, uh, glucose at 4.7 is glucose we're looking at 4.4 is 80 and 5 is 90 as you can see so we're probably talking about a reading of 85 for this particular one. So 30 hours fasted for those that are interested. This is what I did. I did the glucose and ketose reading. So I had a moderate level of uh, ketosis. Now I've not been a big fan of being in ketosis. I don't think you have to be in ketosis. That's because in my journey, these are readings I've had before, blood glucose of five back in April 2021, when I was about a year and a half into a carnivore. And I was losing weight and I was getting defined. And as you can see, I'm not in ketosis. My ketones level were very, very poor. And then if we look, um, these were really random by the way, but just to show you the sort of average, I was getting a reading of 4.6 and ketones of 0.3. And it didn't really worry me. So I was doing all these, different um, biohacks and I had a little phase of using the keto mojo but it didn't seem to make much difference whether I, I had low ketones or slightly high ketones everything just seemed to be improving body composition wise so we we'll look at the weight since I've been doing chisel so you know that I lost eight pounds in May if you've been following it and in June I lost 10.4 pounds and not once was I in ketosis. So I lost quite a lot of weight. And it was only when I did the 36 hour fast that really my ketones went up, which is why I've done this video. So in July, we're already nearly halfway through July. And remember in May, I'd lost about eight pounds. And in June, I'd lost about 10.4 uh, pounds. Here I am in July and we've introduced some fasting. So obviously I'm in ketosis a bit more and the weight isn't particularly shifting. It, it's still moving, but the definition of the, the body fat is going. So 47 hours fasted, my blood glucose is 4.6. So that is around like say 85, if you're looking in uh, American and Canadian numbers, my ketones are 1.2. So a moderate level of ketosis. And the reason I'm doing this video is because there is a, there is a really interesting um, end point to this. So 47 hours fasted, that's what it was. And uh, my weight, so here we are, uh, 20.3 pounds lost in total so, so, so far since May. That's May, June and July, so middle of July. So it's, it, it's, it's a fair bit of weight. Um, also, I wanted to show people that my body fat is going down while my muscle mass is going up. Uh, that's something I've repeated many times. And just so people can see my definition, you know, my abs are there. I'm looking okay, I think. I can probably lose a little bit more weight, but I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that uh, definition there. I could get a little bit sharper and that's possibly what's going to happen over the next four or five weeks as we uh, get to the end of level three on chisel. So um, interesting for those that worry about low ketones and blood glucose going high, mine's increased possibly to stop shakes. Now um, it was a particularly hot day in the UK and I was working out in the woodshed and my glucose was up to 5.9 and my ketones are 1.4. But the reason I took that particular measurement at that point, which was about six o'clock in the evening on the 8th of July, was because I started to feel a bit shaky. And I thought it would be interesting. And most people would assume if you're a bit shaky that your glucose is down and your ketones are down. And uh, 
but that wasn't the case. I think the glucose went up actually to try and stop me shaking to give me a bit more energy. 5.9 is, is quite high. I mean, you're talking around sort of the 105, which, although in the reference range over here says pre-diabetic. I was pre-diabetic when I was running up to age 50. So in my 40s, when I was high carb, um, my numbers were terrible. And when I did my blood, uh, my bloods, basically, my A1C was horrendous. Um, that's not happened now since I've been um, low carb and then keto and then carnivore. I've actually come out of that. But occasionally your blood glucose goes up in response to situations. So on the 9th of July at 8 a.m., uh, higher ketones, look at that, 2.1, and glucose was 4.9. So I was in a high therapeutic level of uh, GKI ketosis. So what's 4.9? 4.9 is just under 90, so about 88 for those in America that want to know. But uh, where's this going, this particular video? Well, my fast ended and I now start to eat. What would you expect would happen? I suppose you would expect my ketones to stop going up. Well, nine hours after a 72 hour fast had been broken by eating, so yeah, nine hours after having that meal. So I had some tuna steaks and what I didn't show you a picture was, I also had a couple of beef burgers with cheese. I had quite a substantial meal. And look at this, my blood glucose is really low, 4.5. So that's about 82, something like that. But 3.7 is my ketones. Pretty much as high as I'm gonna go. If you look at this, this ring here, which is showing you how far into ketosis you are, there's not much left to go. And that's the highest level of ketones I've ever been um, record. I've ever recorded. I wouldn't know if it's happened higher all the time because I haven't got a continual uh, keto monitor. But the keto mojo is very handy because the nine hours after eating, I think most people would expect, wow, we've eaten quite a bit there. Your ketones will probably fall or your blood glucose. And those people that think eating lots and lots of protein puts your blood glucose up. Well, it's a very low level of blood glucose very high level of ketones. Again, I am not obsessed with being in ketosis. Once I finish chisel and I finish this experiment, I will probably never do this again, uh, but I'm doing it for the people that are interested. And like I said, on the right hand side, always that reference. Okay, so then I was back to normal on the 10th of July. And look at that, it doesn't take long for me to go back to normal. So 0 0.5 ketones, not in ketosis, glucose 4.9. So that's just about 87. Uh, again, that's the testament of how good the carnivore diet is for me. But the body will decide what level of glucose and what level of ketones it needs. It's a dynamic number, really, or ratio, and uh, it doesn't really worry me if I'm not in ketosis. And then this is the morning after two days of OMAD. So I was doing uh, quite big meals in the middle of the day. And then I slept for 10 hours and look at the blood glucose. So it's 5.4 and people would be, well, how can this be? You're not eating frequently. You're not eating any carbohydrates, but your blood glucose has gone up to 5.4, which is just under 100. It doesn't worry me, especially when you wake up because your liver is producing glucose for you overnight from non-carbohydrate substrates when you're carnivore or low carb. You don't need to eat any carbohydrates to make that glucose and your liver will make blood glucose. You need it because you're not um, doing anything. Yes, you're sleeping, but you need to be kept alive. Your brain needs to work and function. All your um, systems still need to run and your blood glucose needs to be around that area. To be honest, it's um, about a teaspoon in five and a half liters of blood. So I never really worry. And there's a lot of people that worry when their blood glucose goes up to 100, 110. Well, the diabetic range, I mean, I've had people in the 400s. So the clinical significance of going from, say, 82 to 90 is not very big. And also going up to 110, that's, that's literally a teaspoon and maybe a 20th of a teaspoon extra of sugar. It's, it's not much in, in real terms. So let's see what I was on the next slide. Very interesting. Two hours after eating, look at the ketones. Ketones gone back up to 1.1 and the blood glucose has stayed the same. And many people would think, well, hang on a minute. Why has that happened? Why hasn't it gone up? Some people think if you eat a lot of protein, it's going to put your blood glucose up. Well, 
two hours after eating, that, that was my level. And as you can see, it's just a dynamic range of um, glucose to ketones. So I wouldn't overly worry, like I said, I wouldn't overly worry about being in ketosis or not. But I do think the 72 hour fast had a, had a knock on effect and did put my ketones up temporarily. Um, but as you can see, so the morning after two days of OMAD and asleep, we've got that higher blood glucose than we had before. So thank you for watching. I hope that's been interesting. Um, I will continue to do some of the monitoring, but like I say, I'm not overly bored about bedding ketosis, but I think just for the people that are interested, especially my diabetic uh, clients, um, many of which have come off metformin. The quickest one was seven weeks after 20 years of being on metformin. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen to everybody, but some miraculous things can happen when you go low carb and carnivore is about as low carb as you're going to get. So thank you for watching. Any comments, I'd really appreciate it. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel because it really does help and I can do more videos like this. Thank you.